Two massive explosions have just launched off the sun and are headed to Earth. This could pose the risk for two geomagnetic storms this week, one of which could be strong, and the potential for auroras across the United States. I'm going to go over all that and potential impacts with the storm in the video and some cool apps that you can download to track these things. What you're looking at is the satellite of the sun. You can see the sun's rays here, and that big flash of light, that was a coronal mass ejection, essentially an explosion of plasma that came off the sun, that big shock wave that you saw right there. And here it is again, right, boom, right there. That is headed towards Earth. This is due to the sunspot right here in the center of the sun, and that's facing right at the Earth. So when you get sunspots like that facing the Earth, if they explode a coronal mass ejection, that puts Earth under impact. So this is a computer model when this could all impact Earth. And this is uh, the sun right here. This is Earth. This is the density of the plasma. This is the velocity of the plasma. And you can see it spikes right there, right around the 12th. This will be very tight. I mean, we're talking probably Tuesday evening, really late into early morning Wednesday, you know, somewhere between 9 p.m. Tuesday to 6 a.m. Wednesday will be the most likely uh, chance of this, maybe around 1 a.m. or so Wednesday being the peak. Now, notice something interesting here. So this is Earth. This is the sun. The solar flare, here's the uh, CME, the first one. There's two of these. First one came on the 9th. The second one came on the morning of the 10th. And the second one's moving faster those could merge together right around the same time as they hit Earth. It'll be interesting to see what happens, all the chaos that could occur with the magnetic field when both of those occur at the same time. Otherwise, we might see two different little impulses, which could create two different displays of auroras. It'll be very interesting to see what happens, but those are going to be very close together near just after midnight. This is the two flares on the sun. So there's been actually two of these. The first one being on the 9th, early in the morning, and the second one being on the more early in the morning on the 10th, and these are X-class flares. It's rare that you'll see these flares get above the X, uh, the M-class uh, category, and you can see these right at the X-class. A little bit more likely during the solar peak, which we are pretty much in, uh, but you can see two right, one right after uh, the other. So quite interesting. Now what'll happen is you'll get a proton storm early on, that first initial wave, that will excite the protons in the atmosphere, and that can create uh, communication difficulties out in space if it's strong enough. I haven't heard anything yet of that, uh, but that'll be the, from the protons, that shock wave. The second wave, essentially, from the CME is that plasma. That'll hit the magnetic poles, the nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the magnetic poles, interact with it, and then it'll light up the sky so that you'll get a, a, like a chemical reaction there. And that will create the greens, reds, pinks, all that type of stuff, typically near the poles. But if it's strong enough, it'll go down to the mid-latitudes. So we already are seeing that first initial proton wave. You might see another one with that second flare. Um, but you'll eventually see the, the actual CME hit. And I'll show you how to track these. So right now, we're looking at the KP index. This is an example. This is not the forecast yet. Remember the uh, KP index name here. So this is going to be increasing... Uh, looking at our likelihoods of auroras, it ranges from zero to nine, zero being lower odds, nine being higher odds. This is an example of a KP3, so a lower end odd type of storm. You can see Canada, for the most part, has a decent chance of seeing that aurora, especially central and northern parts of Canada. Very unlikely to see it in the US, but unless maybe you're near the border or so, this is the probability. So if you're in the reds or so, that's very likely. Greens, there's at least a chance. A KP5, you can see this really uh, blows up. Canada, very good chance. And then the United States, you know, the northern U.S., a decent chance. Now, you don't exactly have to be right under this. Even if you're like, you know, 50 to 150 miles south of this, if you're looking north towards the horizon, you might see an arc on the horizon, a weak arc of uh, aurora. So, again, these aren't perfect. Auroras are hard to forecast. Even if you're south, it's, it might be worth looking north into the aurora. But, I mean, if you're right into this area in the red, you might see the aurora overhead, okay, so, or even south of you. So this is a KP7. You can see it really blows up parts of the northern United States and even central United States would see the aurora in that uh, instance, at least a chance with almost 100% chance in Canada. Now, last year when we made this video, or actually it was uh, last summer, a few months ago, 
I mentioned that you, you could see the aurora in the central United States, and it happened. And in fact, the aurora was south of uh, people that were looking in the central United States. It really moved uh, down into the United States. So this is a Tuesday or Monday night's forecast on a Tuesday morning. You can see a decent chance in central Canada, a slight chance all the way in the northern United States into southern Canada. And that red line there, the uh, they added, and that's essentially if you're looking towards the horizon, you might see that arc on the horizon. If you're under here, you might see the auroras right overhead. So there's at least a slight chance. I'd say it's not quite as likely here Monday night to the rest of Monday night to Tuesday morning. But watch what happens tomorrow. This thing blows up. So a really good chance in Canada and a decent chance in the northern United States and even a moderate chance here, I would say, right along this line here that extends from New York, Pennsylvania, down into the parts of the Midwest, Nebraska, Iowa, Wyoming, all the way out to even Oregon. So that little line right there, if you are near north of that line, I would say check north for the aurora tomorrow. Again, even if you're just a little bit south, we have seen instances where when these things peak, the aurora sometimes sneaks a little bit further south. So decent chance in the northern United States, but there'll be a couple of uh, things to watch out for, like clouds and stuff, which I'll go over here uh, here in a second here. So what we're going to look at here is the the clouds here. So this is the HRR model. This is going to be, I'm going to put this right around Tuesday afternoon into the evening, right when this display could start happening. This is around 6 p.m., right after sunset. This orange line is that horizon line that I talked about. The pink line is potentially auroras overhead, uh, or at least more likely. So we'll fast forward it here. So this is 7 p.m., and you can see the clouds. The high clouds are the bluish ones. The mid clouds are the magenta ones, and the low clouds are the gray ones. The lower clouds have the most impact on the sky. Typically, they're thicker and could be associated with precipitation, could be fog. So those are really going to torch you if you're under those clouds. Magenta kind of as well. The high clouds, sometimes they're cirrus, and sometimes they're floating way off in the distance, and they're thinner. So sometimes you can get away with cirrus. If you have multiple ones, then you're really overcast. So as you see tomorrow... Southwestern United States is caked in clouds. Northeastern United States as well, maybe not parts of Maine. But even if you're uh, looking at clouds north of you, that can impact the display. So you want to look north as well because that's where the auroras will be. But you can see the northern United States and to maybe even the Rockies in southern United States, if it were to get down there, that's your best bet. So your best bet probably going to be north of this orange line and where the clouds are clear. You know, as we go towards the rest of the night, when it really starts to potentially ramp up here, we'll go towards like uh, 1 a.m. or so, not a lot really changes. I mean, pretty much the same areas, this area right here in the Midwest, out into the Northern Plains being your best bet for auroras, Minnesota, Iowa, maybe Nebraska and Wisconsin, Southwestern Wisconsin being your best bet. And again, if it gets into the central Southeastern United States, not many clouds down there as well, uh, but really cloudy in the northeastern and uh, northwest, uh, southwestern parts of the United States. So that's going to be our cloud forecast. And now where can you find these KP indexes and stuff that I was talking about? One website is spaceweatherlive.com. They have some good stuff. They even have the moon. You can see the moon half right here. This is the 12th of November, and you can see that KP index reaches a 6. So when you see that thing spike, that's when... Uh, you want to pay attention to the auroras. Uh, but it could, uh, this is a little bit more detailed view. You can see that 7 mark right there, about 7.5 or so. Uh, right around, uh, between, around around midnight or so, that's going to be your best bet. There are Wednesday morning, uh, late Tuesday night, around a 7 or so. So there's a decent chance of auroras in the northern latitudes and mid, mid latitudes as well. The other thing they have is the BZ index. So you want to pay attention to this BZ index. When this thing gets really negative, we're talking negative 10, negative 20, negative 30. That's when there's a good chance of auroras in the northern and central United States. That farther south those auroras go, that more negative BZ is you're going to see. Sometimes you get that thing negative 40 or so, and then you can see that aurora down in Oklahoma and parts of Texas even. And uh, you can track these indexes that I'm talking about using the Aurora, My Aurora Forecast and Alerts app. They have some pretty good stuff. They got the solar uh, flare the sun views I've talked about, the Aurora Oval, the KP index, and these BZ index. 
when that solar flare hits, the CME hits tomorrow, you'll see a spike in these solar wind fields up. So it'll get really windy. The density will go up and then that BZ index will tank. So that's when you typically will see the, the arrival of the storm is you'll see a very dramatic spike in density and speeds and a dive in wind uh, BZ. So look out for that. And then another really cool app uh, I use is this uh, light pollution map.info. And this shows the light pollution in the atmosphere. Areas in the greens, blues, and grays, typically you can get away with with seeing an aurora. Areas in yellows and oranges and pinks, it gets a lot harder to see the aurora because you're in a big city. Like this is Chicago, for instance. You'll really want to get into those green, blues, and grays if you want any shot at seeing the aurora because the light pollution is going to overpower it otherwise. If you have a DSLR camera, that increases the odds as well because you can have long exposures. And sometimes these iPhones and, and uh, other phones will have these uh, like long exposures now where you can set the, ad, uh, the phone to the atmosphere for like 15 or so seconds and it'll capture the aurora. So pretty cool there. So yeah, if we see any major changes, I'll make an update. Uh, but that's what it looks like right now. Uh, pretty good chance again in the northern United States. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe and we'll see you soon.